the First Lady of um, Ethiopia, Her Excellency Mrs. Zenash Tayachi, all the First Ladies here present, my dear sisters, technical advisors of First Ladies, our development partners, Executive Secretary of Offlad, Dr. Nadas, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is always good to speak last, so you would have copied from all your sisters. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just summarize. But please allow me first to express my sincere condolences to our dear sister Monica and the people of Namibia for a great loss, not only for Namibia, but for Africa as a whole. Um, from a president of Namibia, as a true son of Africa, who believed in Africa, fixing Africa's own problem. Our condolences to them at this difficult time. Um, we're here to talk about educate her and transform Africa. For me, that's the story that I live through. In the last five years, I, of course, I became First Lady of the Republic of Sierra Leone in 2018. And in the last five years, my focus has been on how do we educate our girls? What are the methods we need to use to educate our girls? What are the radical inclusions that we have to use, implement, so that our girls will have the space and the opportunity to be educated and have equal opportunities in our country? And uh, through that, I decided to introduce the Hands of Our Girls campaign. The Hands of Our Girls campaign, I would say, today is one of the most radical and known campaign, not only in Sierra Leone, but globally. And I'm grateful to all our partners, and I'm grateful to the United Nations for recognizing the Hands of Our Girls campaign. But I want to also give I mean, praises where it is due. I want to praise my husband, His Excellency, retired Brigadier Julius Madibio, who, out of all of the problems we have in Africa and in our country, Sierra Leone, decided to dedicate 22% of our GDP to education. With that, <laughs> with that, he had empowered us, and he did not only dedicate 22% of our education, but he actually took the radical step in introducing free quality education. With the free quality education, it gives girls the opportunity to be in classrooms instead of being um, child brides or dropouts. With the free quality education, a mother should not be worried about how they're going to be paying a fee for their sons and their girls. Now they have equal space. Now through the free quality education, we are able to introduce the radical inclusion. Radical inclusion is for girls who, for some reason, what has happened to Africa is that when a girl is pregnant, we decide to blame the girl. We don't blame the boy who pregnates the girl. It is always the girl. And the girl is dropped out of school and the boy continues to go to school. But one person does not pregnant herself. There's two people who does that thing and make sure the one person is pregnant. So we introduce free, I mean, the radical inclusion, whereas when girls are pregnant, we keep them in school. We keep them in school until they are about to give birth. They go and then they give birth. Immediately when they give birth, are still strong enough to come back to school we integrate them back into the schooling system so that they remain in school. That is part of the achievement of the free quality education. And the president also, through the hands of our girls campaign, we realize that our girls are the reason why most of them become pregnant at a very early age, is um, the mode of transportation they were using. Most of them use motorbikes to go to school and then they become too familiar with whoever is driving those motorbikes and by the time you realize they start dating that person and they become pregnant. So because of that, the president now introduced transportation for school, I mean for everybody going to school, which means the girls benefit for um, through that transportation. Again, we decided to look at the things that are making our girls not to be in school. Books, 
when you come from a very poor home, a poor background, where the parents, most of, most of our mothers, they have more than three, four, five children to cater for everyone, to have the right school equipment to be in school is a difficult thing. Our president decided to introduce books, free books, for everybody, boys and girls, because he did not want to just be singling out girls. Instead, he would say one is for everybody. So we now have free school um, uh, books. We have meal, free meals for most of our deprived communities around the countries where food is a problem. The government decided to introduce um, meal. Um, the free, we also, the president also, some people will say um, our president is too crazy. I mean, he's beyond, he or she is crazy to see women succeed. You know, um, he introduced a free tuition fee for all girls doing STEM subjects. So for all girls who dare to do engineering, who dares to do technology, who dares to do the things that only boys do, now go to school, they finish their primary, secondary, and then go to university and it's paid for by the government until they finish university. So we introduce all of that. But in some of our achievements in the last five years include um, the introduction of the Gibi Act. It's the first time an African president is there to actually make it a policy. You know, I mean, um, what Rwanda has done in including women into every decision-making process. The president in West Africa said, you know what, I'm going to not only include women, but I'm going to make it a law. So he passed the Kiwi Act. Today, 30% of all public positions, government positions, are held by women. From Parliament, we have 30% of women in Parliament. Um, in terms of ministerial position, ministers and deputy ministers, we are about 38%. We don't even want the men to know, so we don't talk about the percentage. We're just occupying our space on the table. We're at 38%. And in that law, for the first time in Sierra Leone, women can now own their own land. They can have a land with their name on it. So they don't have to be waiting for their husband to pity them and help them get a land. For the first time in that um, Giwi Act, now when a woman is a widow, no family member will come and leave you in your husband's house, which was a case before. And that one basically is for both men and women because immediately a man or a woman is a widow, the family will come and then invade your house and oh my, my brother is not here anymore, my sister is not here, it's their property, and then they take over. We have a new law that says, no, you can't do that. And that also has now helped with the land, women who can have land for themselves, they are now able to gain financial support from banks, they can use their land, their land papers to get um, loans from banks so that they'll be able to do businesses that they wanted to do. And um, these are achievements. Under the Hands of Our Girls um, campaign, we realize that there is one big problem in Africa, which is menstruation. A lot of people don't want to talk about menstruation. For them, menstruation is the biggest taboo that we don't talk about. And menstruation is part of a woman's life. And I thought, you know what, if we have radical inclusion, we are dealing with radical inclusion, we can also talk about menstruation. So I introduced the free sanitary pad for our girls in school, and today, because of the free sanitary pad for our girls in school, we have 86% of retention of girls in school at the end of every year. Because of the um, free sanitary pad for girls in school, instead of a girl missing out of school 84 days, which was the case just because they seen their menstruation, now they are in school, they can play football, they can play volleyball, they can do everything a boy does in school, and they don't have to worry because when that time comes for them to see their menstruation, they have the right sanitary pad to take care of them. Um, they have, I mean, our president has changed the laws on rape issues. When he came in in 2018, Sierra Leone was basically a country that every day you hear about rape, and the rape was so bad to the point where they talk about a man raping a child that is three months old. That is madness. And today, with that, when that was happening, 
you know, they go to court. In fact, the case will remain in court forever. There will be no justice and, you know, the victim will be victimized over and over. Now that is not happening because for now when you, when you the children in Sierra Leone are called Fatima's children. If you rape any of my children, we're going to court. And if we find you guilty, you will spend nothing less than 15 years in prison. And in an event you rape a woman and that woman died in that process, we will make sure you go to prison for life. So that has reduced rape issues in Sierra Leone drastically. Because no one wants to go to prison for 15 years and no one just because of a five minute sex and no one wants to go to prison for life just because of a five minute sex. So, through the last five years, um, I presented to my sister that I've managed to get two resolutions from the United Nations. Um, one of them is access to justice for rape victims globally, because that has been a problem. When a woman is raped, they go to the judicial system, and the system is expecting them to be the one to pay their legal fee. Now, with access to justice globally, they are not supposed to be the one paying their legal fee. Through um, the United Nations also, I managed to get November 18 as a world day to commemorate the healing process for rape victims. And I want to say thank you again to my dear sister of Angola and my sister of Nigeria who came to the November 18 um, celebration, which was the first celebration in Sierra Leone to commemorate with us in Sierra Leone. We have introduced the HPV vaccine. Um, uh, we, we, we got 300,000 of that vaccine from Gavi, which um, they have introduced into our schooling system so that we'll try to prevent cervical cancer for our girls. I also want to say, currently, um, working with um, UNFPA and UN Women, we're championing one of the laws that is really uh, uh, the, the, the reason why we have problem in terms of marriage issues in Sierra Leone is that our law is so confusing. They said you cannot be married until you are 18, but in an event, if you are not 18, somebody else can give a consent for you. So which means you are legalizing rape indirectly because no one can give consent on marriage for a child. So that is the campaign we are on right now in Sierra Leone to make sure it is repealed and that a child can only be married when they are 18 and the child should give consent for themselves. That is what we are focusing on now. Um, in terms of bridging education and health facilities, that is something that we're working on drastically, rapidly right now, in, including as we are promoting education, we are promoting um, um, health facilities to have the best of health facilities in our country so that we don't, because we are basically a, a health tourist nation at the moment. Any major sickness we have, we have to travel out of our country to, to seek help. And that we are trying to change. And I hope before the end of His Excellency's time, in the next five years, you'll be able to change that. So we don't, we stop being um, health um, tourists all over the world. Um, with the We Are Equal campaign, I have not launched We Are Equal campaign because We Are Equal campaign is just like saying hands of our girls because we're fighting for them to be equal. But what I've decided to do is actually use the Day of the African Child, which is June 16, to actually launch We Are Equal campaign. And what we have done with the hands of our girls, because when you say hands of our girls, it's only about girls. We've decided this year to now include our slogan, which is our girls, our pride, our boys, our allies. So we're working with the boys because we now want to, in the next five years, in terms of making them understand that they cannot touch a girl in that country anymore, we have achieved that. But what we are now trying to do is get the boys to work as allies with our girls so that they also help them and empower them. They give them the confidence they need in schools and then they will go together and they will achieve together. These are the things that I am working on at the moment and through His Excellency the President, you know, we've been pushing and I'm very much grateful that whatever I try to do in Sierra Leone, I will have a sister. My sisters will come to support and I want to say thank you to every one of them for supporting the cause because in Africa today, whether we like it or not, 
52% of our population. Whatever the first ladies decide on doing affects 52% of our population. And that we have to concentrate in making our population better. Our advocacy should be an advocacy not for the elite but for the grassroots because we have more people below than more people above. And I also think as we are now looking at margin health, because it has always been health, health, health with um, African First Ladies, we're not talking, we, we've included development, I still believe we still have space to talk about peace because there is no way you could develop a continent if you don't look at what is causing us our problems. If you look around this table now, we have so many countries that have military rule. And we as African First Ladies, we're not talking about that because it is not our problem. But whenever there is a problem in our continent or our country, we affect more women and more children. So I think we should also include peace in our campaign so that when we go to our people, we make them understand that whatever we're doing, it can only be sustained if there is peace in our country. I thank you all for your attention. May God bless you. opportunities free from discrimination and barriers. 
Today, as First Ladies and Partners, we reaffirm our commitment to educate her, transform Africa. Each of our speakers today has underscored the urgent need to build resilient education systems that are inclusive, lifelong, and deliver quality learning. As our flag, we look forward to, represent, to representing a united front with partners as our unified campaign for equality continues. We look forward to understanding and integrating partner priorities to develop an impactful engagement platform. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we move forward, let us build on the momentum generated here and transform our words into action. Let us continue to collaborate tirelessly with governments, partners, and advocates across the continent to implement the commitments made at this forum and drive positive change for gender equity. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you once again for your contributions to the successful of this assembly. Your passion and commitment to action is the driving force behind our collective, our collective effort to create a brighter and more equitable future for all women and girls. Let us forge ahead with renewed determination and solidarity, knowing that by educating her, we truly have the power to transform Africa and build a better world for generations to come. We look forward to having more collaborations and as First Ladies supporting each other as we continue to launch the We Are Equal campaign in the respective countries and share best practices and lessons learned through the process. I wish you journey masses as we travel back home to our families and communities. Please pass our greetings to your families and communities when we get back home. And those few remarks, it is now my singular honor to declare this 28th General Assembly of Organization of Africa First Ladies for Development officially closed. Thank you for your kind attention. God bless our flag. God bless Africa. Lunch and the Karma Plus Lounge is going to be held at the Dallas Lounge building. It's a seven minute walk from here. There is uh, a bus, some uh, bus prepared for the first ladies, uh, for those who wish not to walk. But it's seven minutes from here and we expect you there. Lunch is waiting for you. Thank you very much.